Every entrepreneur has a moment or a series of moments that leads them to become who they are meant to be. I call these moments intuitive turning points. I'm Dr. Meg Hayworth, and I am the host of Intuitive Turning Points. Come join us for stories of successful entrepreneurs who have gone through the journey. These entrepreneurs have accomplished so many things in their lives. I will have best-selling authors, TEDx speakers, people who've created successful businesses as an entrepreneur. It doesn't happen overnight. And as I always say, entrepreneurship is a personal development journey. And it takes time to develop yourself into the person you're meant to be to help other people become who they're meant to be. Thank you so much for listening and enjoy the show. My guest today on Intuitive Turning Points is Cassie Bjork. She is a globally recognized industry leader in weight loss, a highly sought after speaker, number one international best-selling author of Why Am I Still Fat? And she's the CEO of Redefined Weight Loss and Redefined Vitamins. A registered dietitian for over a decade, Cassie has helped tens of thousands of women lose weight and keep it off for good by identifying and addressing their number one weight loss blocker. The real reason the pounds wouldn't budge no matter how many diets or workout plans were followed, virtually every major media outlet, including CBS, ABC, WCCO, Fox News, CNN, Time, Parade, Cosmopolitan, Self, Shape, Women's Health, and the Huffington Post has covered Cassie's debunking of dieting lies as she shares the truth about food, cravings, and weight. So let's welcome to the show, Cassie Bjork. Welcome to Intuitive Turning Points. Cassie Bjork, thank you so much for being on the show today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm so excited to talk to you um, for a lot of reasons, but um, because I know a lot about you and we've worked together before and you've actually done my intuitive one-on-one coaching program yeah. before I created the group one. So, um, so it's really exciting for me to just kind of see your, your intuitive journey and, and how that unfolded for you and how it keeps unfolding. Cause I think this is a really good example for entrepreneurs that are just starting out to, t- to understand. And I always say this, it's a personal development journey to become an entrepreneur. It's not something you just you know, just doing everything's great all the time. It's the greatest greatest personal development and spiritual journey that there possibly is. Yeah. And when I started, I was so in my head and I made all my decisions, business, life, everything from almost a hundred percent in my head, as -hmm. you know. And um, then I learned that like, Oh, I do have an intuition and it, you know, shine sometimes. And I've, so I started making decisions based on my intuition. I love how that in our work together, I was really able to, you know, refine that and and fine tune. I feel like I've dropped so much more into my heart over the last few years. And it's just totally shifted my entire experience as an entrepreneur. So I just couldn't be more excited and grateful to be here and for having you, Dr. Meg, in, in my life and to support me Because, you know, as an entrepreneur too, like, I think it's so great and important and necessary for us to constantly be growing. And a lot of times we think it's just like business workshops and masterminds. And I did all of those things, you know, I was in my masculine energy and hanging out with all the really high level business men. And for me, I think, especially like as a female to really learn, I mean, everyone needs to learn to tap into their intuition. It's so beneficial. And like as a female too, to kind of step back and, um, and learn what that looks like to be in my feminine as I'm developing my intuition as an entrepreneur. That is such an important part of it. And I I think um, a a lot of us women, we end up having to examine that part of it um, because we have to step into the masculine energy to organize, to trailblaze, to move forward to all the stuff that we do, you know, and into the masculine world, which, you know, I think any woman in business will, would be able to say that, especially particular businesses, but, yeah. but I want to know. It's also so, cool how yeah. it carries over like to personal life and even to the clients that we coach and my weight loss coaching programs. Like my energy obviously has a huge effect on their energy and their success. So we can yeah. talk about that later too, just how it all piles over, but go ahead. I'm so excited. <laughs> it, <does>. it really <laughs> does. Well, you're just somebody I can talk to forever. So <laughs> like, we gotta- like, we got to start recording at some point. <laughs> <gonna chat. laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so 
I would love to hear, you know, what was that intuitive turning point moment um, where you just knew you had to step out of what you thought you should be doing or what you were doing and do what you knew you had to be doing like that calling in your heart? Yeah, there was a specific, a specific moment. Um, I was in school to be a registered dietitian and I was, um, you know, going, I was going to class one morning and I'll never forget. I got the call from my mom. Um, and she told me that my dad had been running a road race in my hometown and he started, and he was like the most fit in shape person that I knew. He didn't smoke, wow. didn't drink, wasn't overweight, was really active. He ran like three miles a day. He ate like I did at the time, low calorie, low fat, you know, following all of the all of the rules that I was being taught in dietitian school. Yeah. And he was running this race and he started to feel this tightness in his chest that just stopped him cold. And wow. instead of sailing across the finish line, like he always did at every one of his races, he walked across like much later, you know, he walked across holding his chest and he was rushed into the doctor into immediate major mm -hmm. heart surgery, get a coronary artery bypass graft, a double. And um, it was oh. so unexpected and so immediate. And I was just Scary. floored yeah. because he was only 47 and he was all the doctor said, he's the picture of health. This is so yeah. odd. You know, he was, they were asking him what he was eating and drinking and, and, you know, low fat heart, healthy oatmeal for breakfast with skim milk. Um, you know, he never looked at bacon, never touched a stick of butter. He was doing all these things. And it was so yeah. interesting because that's what I was being taught in school. And that's what I was supposed to be teaching. Yes. And yeah. it was interesting. I remember sitting in the hospital room with him and he came out of surgery and the dietitian came in and mm -hmm. I was like, Oh, perfect. I'm, you know, studying to be a dietitian myself. I'm not going to tell her that. Cause obviously she knows <laughs> something I don't know. Yeah. Um, I can and learn. Also, <laughs> <laughs> and also I was like, I think I was in my third or fourth year of, of school. And what was interesting to me also was as I continued to diligently follow these, you know, calories in calories out exercise like crazy, you know, count your calories, eat less, eat low fat. Um, I started to gain weight and I know a lot of women have this happen and they get so confused. Like how am I gaining weight when I'm eating less and exercising more? So yeah. we can go back to that at some point. Cause that's what you know, I support women with in our coaching programs, but this yeah. happened to me. And I remember sitting in there in his hospital room and the dietitian came in. And I thought, yeah, it is interesting that here, you know, all the stuff he's doing landed him here and I'm doing the same things. I'm 15, almost 20 pounds heavier than when I started dietitian school. Oh wow! Uh, so maybe she'll tell us something different. Like she must know something that. Yeah. Cause you're you know, following, you're following the protocols you're learning, right? Yeah, you know, yeah, you think your yeah. body's your experimentation yeah. your laboratory, you know? So, yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, you know, and, and also just, it, it, I mean, there's so many stories about people who try to lose weight and they end up gaining weight. So I was making all these connections. I'm seeing all these yeah. stories and patients. And, and then I see my dad and I see me. And so she walks in and she says, okay, so here's what you got to do. Now that you have this major heart surgery, we've got to shift your diet. You've got to maintain a low fat, low calorie diet. Don't ever look at a stick of butter again. Don't eat bacon, you know, eat margarine, eat oatmeal, you know, wheat bread, fat free cheese, which you know, cheese is fat. So that doesn't even make sense. But at the time I was just listening and I'm thinking, so I said, he's already doing all of that. Yep. And she goes, great, keep doing it. And that's it. And I was, I was so defeated. <sighs> and I also felt just furious, you know, sitting there thinking you're telling him to continue to do all these, the very things that landed him on your operating table in the first place. And here I am doing all these right things and I'm heavier yeah. than I'd ever been. Like what was happening? And that was the moment, Meg, that really, I became determined to figure all this out. Like I knew I had to become my own advocate to yep. help myself, but also to help my dad. Wow. That is a, an amazing moment, you know, where you're just, it's so clear to you. Yeah. And, and I think that, you know, to, to you and me, it's, it's super obvious mm -hmm. that um, if you land in the hospital, all the stuff you're doing, you need to review every last bit of it. And because mm -hmm. what got you there is probably all the stuff you were doing. <laughs> so, yeah, but, you know, yeah. and so unwinding that for you. So, so then what yeah. happened next after you, after this turning point moment where you're just like, I can't, I got to figure this out. What did you do? 
Well, also, I, I'll say that there were other things leading up to that that I was just questioning in school mm-hmm. when I was going you know, to be a dietitian. Like one of my tests was like, what's the best snack? And there was like, you know, fat free cracker crackers and like avocado. And I picked the avocado because the avocado is the real food. But the answer was the fat free crackers because they had the lowest amount of calories. And I was like, oh, and I, and I knew, I knew yeah. that's how they wanted me to answer. So actually mm. I did answer that, even though I knew the avocado was healthier because it's a real food, but I had to do things against what felt right in my heart and what I knew to be true in order to pass the test. Oh my gosh. And also, you know, my education, mm. a lot of it was funded by, you know, big food, big pharma. And so I, I won't go too deep down this rabbit hole, but imagine if your doctor's license to practice medicine was paid for by McDonald's, you know, would you be surprised if you got a prescription for a Big Mac? And that's exactly <laughs> what I saw happening in the world of nutrition. When I, when I attended my first dietitian conference, I walked in and I saw this huge tent set up by Pepsi and they were sponsoring a calorie counting campaign. And I could go to these talks sponsored by Pepsi and I could get continuing education credits as a dietitian. And I was like, it doesn't, and, and, and here's is, your Pepsi, here's your hundred em- empty calories. Yeah. Yeah. And so then we think we, we kind of look back to, okay, yeah. counting calories. Why does that exist? That whole myth? Well, if we treat all calories as equal, then it doesn't matter what you eat, you know, because, and that's what Pepsi wants you to believe because yeah. then you can have diet Coke all day long or diet, diet Pepsi, I guess, for this example, all day long yeah. and not gain. So, so it's interesting when you really track it back. So I had all these yeah. concerns and all these questions already. So then that moment came in the hospital and I was like, yep, this is, this, this, this is my next step. So I had to, you know, dive into all the scientific research on my own that was outside of my assigned coursework. And I did, and I learned some, I didn't, I didn't actually think this is what I was going to learn, but I learned that if I want to results and if we want to be healthy, we've got to do the exact opposite of what I was learning in school to be a dietitian. So, yeah. You so know. now you've got this conflict going on inside of yourself and you're just like, okay. And, and I imagine at this point too, as you're learning, you're starting to eat the diet that you're reading about, right. And your body's yeah. changing and all of yep. these and great I'm like, things oh you're gosh, like, I'm losing actually, weight. <laughs> yeah. Fat is actually good for you. I've been restricting it for like all these years yeah. and oh my gosh, that myth started in the 1970s and that, you know, and, and, and like, we've only gotten fatter and sicker since then. So I'm diving into all this and I'm shifting my ways and I'm seeing results. You know, I couldn't yeah. believe I was eating more calories and more fat and actually exercising less, but I was getting to the root, which is what I, you know, help my female clients do is get to the root of what's actually, you know, b- beneath the surface and causing the weight gain, right. which it's not about restricting, you know, it's, it's not about dishonoring your body and not listening to it. And anytime you starve yourself, your metabolism slows down. So I was learning all of this and I was implementing it in my life and I lost the weight. And I started to feel way better, way more energetic. I had all these crazy cravings for carbs and sugar. That's actually what led me to create my program called Cravings to Freedom because so many women have cravings and some, sometimes it's emotional, but sometimes it's actually physical and yeah. we can learn to support our brain chemistry. So we don't actually crave sugar and crave carbs mm-hmm. and, um, you know, all, all salty foods also turn to carbs in our body. So it's or car- turned to sugar in our body. So it's right. not, when I talk about sugar cravings. It's like even, you know, salty chips and crackers, those are sugar cravings and yes. we can learn how to support our body. So we don't even crave them and we feel yeah. in control and empowered. But anyway, that was a big struggle of mine. So I yeah. learned how to actually empower myself through food, through nutrients, through some supplements that uh-huh. actually helped my body balance out. And this is what, this was another turning, turning point. I think it was kind of more of like turning points over time as I yes. saw the shift in yeah. my body and in my experience that I was like, oh my gosh, I can't just stay. And, and at that point I'd had a, you know, I got a clinical job in a hospital. I was working full time. I was really oh, wow. well-respected yeah. by the doctors. I had my white lab coat that I was so proud of wearing every day. Yeah. And I knew, I knew in my heart of hearts, like I've got to help people that are, you know, the, the hospital is an important place. There's sick people and you know, mm-hmm. I was working in an intensive care unit and helping a lot of people, but I knew there's so many people, you know, I was seeing all my mom's friends and all these women that were just struggling. And I had all this knowledge that they yeah. didn't have. And I yeah. knew that was my calling. Yeah. Wow. And what a conflict too, because there you are having to enforce guidelines that you know are inaccurate. And yes. so that had to be like just the dissonance there. And so when did you start uh, your, your business then? 
So my business started, well, it started when I was working in the hospital. I started just kind of posting some stuff on a blog and on a Twitter mm-hmm. account back in the day. And um, things took off really quickly. Mm-hmm. I had a few moments, you know, share posted one of my blog posts and it went viral. And I started getting all these TV segments and radio segments because I think people really liked my fresh perspective mm-hmm. um, on what I had to say. I mean, I'm, I, I'm saying things like eat more butter to lose weight and you don't have to count calories. You can actually eat more and yeah. weigh less. And that's so refreshing when you're hearing from, you know, a, yeah. a lot of women see dietitians even, and they'll tell them to cut back. So they will, and they'll mm-hmm. follow all these rules and then their weight will go up. And usually the dietitian is just like, are you sure you're actually following this diet? And you should probably just eat less. And it's just so, it makes us feel so guilty and so shameful. And then we get stuck in like this vicious cycle. And of course, the more you diet, the more your metabolism slows down. So then when your metabolism slows down, you gain weight. So you can actually just keep gaining weight after depriving yourself. And it's just Mm -hmm. like this lose, lose, situation. So I started my business and things took off pretty quick. And when I eventually quit my job at the hospital um, to pursue my business full time, uh, it was like things just 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 really blew up. I hired a bunch of dietitians and was building my team. And we had a practice in person um, in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Um, And I will say, I love how you commented on the dissonance that was happening for me because I also was still attending things like these Pepsi sponsored things to get my continuing education credits to be a dietitian. And it really felt icky to me because it was like, Mm -hmm. I was actually going, I was breaking all the rules as a dietitian to practice and to teach what I knew was the truth. And I was seeing results. Like every woman I've helped (laughs) has seen results. I've never had a woman that I haven't been able to help. And usually they say, good luck with, you know, good luck. I'm a unique snowflake. No one's ever been able to help figure out my weight issue. And I could, and I could solve, I could, I could solve their problem. So what happened then, as you, as, as you know, Meg is, um, I got approached by, I actually got served papers by the Minnesota board of nutrition and dietetics because they didn't like what I was teaching. And, you know, as I mentioned, all the approaches that have worked for all the people that I've helped fly in the face of traditional dietitian training. Right. And it was only when I actually bucked the outdated rules that their weight fell off and their lives were changed. Yeah. So the board, and even though, say, even though that's all very obvious, even though it's all obvious, I have research to back up everything, which to fight this lawsuit, I ended up having to pull up research, which there is, there's plenty of research out there and yeah. there's actually not for the stuff they're teaching, but that's another story, but they didn't, they didn't actually think I should be talking about anything, not hormones, not inflammation, not thyroid, not nutrients. They actually boil it down to the only thing I can talk about is food. And, um, it has to be low fat counting calories approach. That's what I had to do. And the problem is you can't get results unless you look at the whole picture of a person, the whole picture of their health. That's why I do it. And that's why I've got amazing results. I've gotten in my 14 and a half years as a dietitian. Yeah. We are whole people and we have different uh, systems that we have to, I mean, that's the exact same thing I learned in my own healing journey is that you have to honor every system, mental, emotional, physical, spiritual, energetic. And if you don't work on all of the systems, you're going to be stalled in some area. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So there came another turning point for me and it didn't come fast. I wish I could say Mm -hmm. it came sooner, but I actually fought this lawsuit for five and a half years. And we're talking lawyers, lawyer fees, court dates, mediation, negotiation, interrogation. I mean, the whole work. That's intense. It was so intense. And I look back and like, the reason I did it is because I built my brand on the authority that I believed like my dietitian license gave me. Like I was so proud of it because there's a lot of yeah. health coaches and people out there that, I mean, and you, you know, you see this, I mean, you yeah. are credentialed and you see a lot of people that are teaching things that don't have any degrees. And I was proud of it. I mean, yeah. I worked so hard to get my, to, to get my license. And mm-hmm. I knew a lot of girls from my class that never actually got theirs because they never passed the exam. They never got it to accepted to an internship. Oh. Like it was a lot of work. Yeah. So I really, and I knew I was standing for the truth and I felt mm-hmm. like I'm going to be the one to make change on the inside. Like, you know, there's, they can't take away my license because I'm not doing anything wrong and I can prove what I'm doing is right. So I just was like, felt like I was fighting on behalf of like all these women that yeah. you know never got to stand up for themselves. Yeah. And in the process, I did some soul searching, you Mm -hmm. know, and I had to really, I I had to really ask myself 
if after five and a half years, if it was really something that I was supposed to keep fighting for, yeah. or if it was something maybe I should just let go. Wow. That's yeah. a big thing, you know? Uh, so this yeah. moment, so yeah. was it sort of like a gut feeling or something or were you just sort of it was so came upon you one day or? <laughs> well, I don't, you know, it's just, it's just interesting how we have these moments, right? These turning mm-hmm. points in life because um, I was living in Minnesota at the time. That's, I still had the in-person um, clinic and I was traveling to California because I, I travel a lot, you know, me, I like to like go to Bali and Hawaii and I like to yeah. live all over the place and, um, and just pursue all that life has to offer. And I was in Santa Barbara, California, mm-hmm. and I was working at a coffee shop and I just gotten there the day before and I was just enjoying the windows were open and the sun was pouring in fresh air. And, um, my attorney called and he uh-huh. said, the board needs you in St. Paul, Minnesota tomorrow morning for another litigation. Oh my gosh. And I was like, jump (laughs) everything in my body was like, absolutely not. I am done rearranging my entire life, booking flights, like in, like it's in those still quiet moments. Mm -hmm. Like when I thought about just surrendering and this is what I did. I I, I said, let me call you back in five minutes. Okay. I just, so I just sat with it and I thought about what it would feel like to just, just surrender the license, like, you know, not get it taken away from me, but not fight for it anymore. And I found this newfound sense of lightness and yeah. peace that just like warmed my heart. And it made me feel really authentic and really connected. Gosh, those are special moments, you know? And I think, yeah. Yeah. you know, I, I wonder how many people get to a moment like this where they just know yeah. they need to surrender something and then they don't, you know, and how much harder it makes them for yeah. themselves, you know? And but- logically, I didn't want to surrender it. Cause logically yeah. I was like, but, but, yes. <laughs> but I'm in the right, but they can't take that away. I worked so hard. I paid so much money for that. I worked so yeah. hard for that. And I did have this fear of like, even though I, I had a, you know, successful business at the time, I had tens of thousands of followers and mm-hmm. had a lot of media publicity. And I think there was this little part of me that thought people are going to think I'm a fraud. Oh, um, like yeah. what if they, what if they stop believing me? What if it was those two letters behind my name? that gave me authority and power. Yeah. So it felt pretty vulnerable, but, um, Mm -hmm. that space that I was in, like, I want to, I was like, I want to live and everything I do, I want it to flow from that space. Exactly. Every decision I make, I want it to come from that space. Yes. Yes. That knowing place where you just, you just have to, you know, this, and even though most of the time intuition or oftentimes I should say it flies in the face of reason. Like yeah. it doesn't make sense to you, you know, yeah. why am I, why am, but I, okay. You know, yeah. and the, the so more you just in. say yes to it. Yeah. So the choice yeah. didn't even feel like a choice. It felt more of like a welcomed, easy step toward transcendence and opening up for newer, greater opportunities. And, yeah. and, and also at the time, my brand was called dietitian Cassie. Yes. And now of course, <laughs> we've, we've rebranded, it's redefined weight loss. Um, which is so cool because we redefine the way women think about weight loss. But at the time I was called dietitian Cassie. Mm -hmm. So when I ended up surrendering my license, they gave me 14 days to rebrand everything. Even my, my book, it's, you know, it was by dietitian Cassie on the cover and they made me change everything. And I didn't realize that would have to happen, but, um, it did. So, so, so in the end it was, it was, I was willing to do it all though. I was like, it's, you know, if the license stands for all the things I don't agree with, yeah. why would I fight so hard to hang on to it? It's not aligned yeah. with what I believe or how I run my business or how I know weight loss and health works. So yeah. the funny thing too, is when they told the board, what I decided, they were shocked. They couldn't believe <laughs> they were. I would give up the French. They, they expected a longer battle, but nope. Yep. Yep. There you go. <laughs> so, so yeah. So after that though, I mean, what happened with your business? It actually boomed even more. And that's yeah. not why I gave up my license. Of course, that was actually a fear that it would, it, that yeah. The, the fear that the happen. opposite would happen. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But, yeah. But yeah. I think like, I, I think there's just something energetically about standing in your authority and doing mm-hmm. what you know is true and operating out of integrity that, I mean, I got a lot of media publicity. Every podcast and TV show I'd ever been on wanted me back on yeah. when they heard about this. And, right. you know, it, it was a big deal. And I got to mm-hmm. go on and, and share from my heart and talk about how what we do works 
And yeah. sometimes, you know, we, we have to look at things differently and we can't stay stuck in these same mindsets. And I got to really share my experience and, 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 and yeah, frankly, I mean, thing, we were able to help more women yeah. and my business continued to grow like way more than I thought it would. Like yeah. I thought maybe if anything, things would stay stable, but uh-huh. we like tenfolded in the next year and we yeah. just continued to grow. And I think it's just such a, such a good reminder of like, the abundance mindset. And yeah. when we operate from a place of integrity, we just get blessed. Yeah. You know? That's so like, true. Like that flow that happens that, um, and then there's, there's also, you know, I'm, I'm feeling that energy of liberation yeah. and you liberated yourself from this thing that had been a shackle on you ever yes. since, you know, yes. it was um, like really ever since the beginning. And then when you liberate yourself, then others can connect with that energy. Like they feel that energy and they're like, I, I want that. <laughs> yeah, you know? it, it actually felt, I know there's such a parallel with that. Such a good point. Like I felt like this weight was off my shoulders and yeah. I mean, I never, I didn't miss it. Cause I was never aligned with it to begin with. And you know, the rules behind it attempted to put me in this very box that I tell the women that I work with to break free from. Yes. So I feel like there's like such a parallel about like, you know, I ask all the women I work with to like, take these, you know, a big step of faith. And, um, I think I just had to take one too. Yeah. And I needed to break with the rules that were no longer serving me along mm-hmm. with the ruling bodies that never serve me or the women that I helped begin with. So it yeah. just seemed like such a beautiful, like I'm doing this, you know, and now the women that I work with, they get to break those rules that aren't serving them. And they get to experience the freedom that happens when you let go of, you know, these false beliefs that haven't served us to begin with. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, yeah. so now in your life, um, there's a, a, a kind of a, you, we've talked a little bit about there's a new turning point that you're kind of in. And I think this is really important, because the turning points don't stop, <laughs> especially the longer you're in business, things you know, continue to happen. So what's happening for you now that you would like to share? Well, now what's happening is I'm realizing that, you know, I I've loved this impact that I've been, we've been having working with women and what was happening was my business was really growing in a way where I continued to hire more and more dietitians and um, which is great because we wanted, we've always wanted to help more women. We were doing, you know, one-on-one coaching and people were making appointments and it just got to be, a lot, you know, and I actually found myself disconnected because I wasn't doing coaching anymore. I was coaching the coaches. I was coaching the dietitian coaches and they were seeing the clients. And I found myself in a space where I was just like, I knew I was helping people because we get amazing testimonials every day they'd pour in, but I just felt like so disconnected from the people that we were helping. So I decided I wanted to insert myself back into the business and help women. But I knew that I didn't have the capacity to help all the women that we would be able to help if I did that. And, you know, I'd have to charge so much that there'd be a lot of women that would miss out. So I decided to really shift the whole model of my business. So over the last year, we've shifted everything from instead of having, you know, all these dietitians and doing one-on-one, we now have a group coaching program Mm -hmm. that women can sign up for. And it's modules that I record. So it's like videos and lessons and they learn with me. So, Uh you know, essentially there's video training, but there's also um, live Q and a calls and it's so fun. It's like a big classroom and I get to show up and I get to answer their questions. So I get to coach, but I get to coach so many women instead of just one, it's like, I get the option to help help as many women as possible who are able to hop on the coaching calls. So they still get to learn from me and I still get to help them, but it doesn't require, you know, as much of my time. And it's a way lower investment for them because, you know, they're watching the videos and the modules that I recorded ahead of time. And then I, you know, they're in a classroom style instead of one-on-one. So it's such a win, win, win um, for everybody. And it's just, it's, it's been amazing to actually get back into helping more women. And I have more time then to get to create, to create more for them and to come up with new ideas and really to invest everything that I have into this one program, because yeah. before it was just like, things were just getting so big. And I had so many people on my team and it was such a blessing. It's like hard to complain about that, but I was just like, I want to be a part of it again. And, and, and we want to help more people. And, and how can we do that? So this was the solution. It's, it's called Bye Bye Belly Fat. And it's an oh, weight loss coaching it. program, but they mm-hmm. actually get access to all the modules and everything for, for life. And then we do yeah. um, the Q&A calls in addition. And we have a private community where the women are in there yes. every day asking questions. And it's just like such a special, yeah. I feel like it's like my, my baby, like the best yeah. that I've 
ever created and yeah. I get to be part of it. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that great? And my uh, evolving intuition is set up in the same way. And so yeah, I can we're talking really about relate to, yeah. um, to that kind of feeling, you know, where you, you you can get so far away from your business that you feel like you're no longer in it, you know, sort of outside of it. And um, to be able to be, because I mean, ultimately you, you, we started because we want to help people, yeah. you know, yeah. and that direct contact is just so powerful and important. And then to watch the group yeah. grow and the, the relationships that get formed and all of that, it's really, it's, it's such a beautiful experience. Yeah. And I think I thought, I think I was a little nervous that losing that one-on-one touch, would yeah. um would, like I didn't want people like the women we work with to lose that, but yeah. it's actually way better this way because we would have so many women would say, you know, can I connect with any of your other clients? Like, can you give yeah. me? <laughs> yeah. We didn't do that, and now they support each other. They say hi to each other on the calls. Like some of them are working out together in the morning virtually because they're all over the world, and it's just uh-huh. a beautiful community. And then what I also love too is you know, the coaching is really consistent and the program they're going through is super consistent because they're all going through the same eight modules and each module has, you know, five to six lessons that I recorded. So I know they're all getting that information versus, you know, it's kind of like, I guess, going to Starbucks versus a different coffee shop. Like you kind of get the same thing every time so that I know that all the women are getting my coaching and they're going through this process and then they can bring their questions and they can get personalized coaching from me. And if they don't have any questions, they still show up because they learn from the other women, just like I'm sure that happens in in your group too. It's, it's way better than anything I ever could have dreamed of. And I feel so connected to it. I feel so connected (laughs) to them and I feel connected to my heart and my calling more than I ever have. That's so great. That's so great. Um, Wow. Another wonderful turning point in your life and for the lives of others because of how you influence them and, and help them heal. Um, so yeah. let, how do people get in touch with you? Yeah. Redefinedweightloss.com. That's where the party's at. <laughs> <laughs> I have like a, I have a free training it's a one hour training called, um, it's the bye-bye belly fat masterclass. And that's at redefinedmasterclass.com. And that's really where I go through my whole process. And like, Mm -hmm. and I briefly mentioned earlier, like it's never really about calories. There's like these deeper things we have to heal in order to actually lose weight and keep it off. And I go over how all of that looks in my, my process that I use with our clients. If women, you know, if this is something that's resonating and you're like, yeah, I've been trying to get rid of that stubborn weight and nothing seems to work. Um, it's a free training. I, I, I recommend just going to check that out and see if my approach resonates with you. Redefinedmasterclass.com. Okay, great. All right. Thank you so much for your time today and Thanks, your story. Dr. Thanks for having me. <laughs> You're I'm so welcome. For your coaching. You've helped me so much. And like, it's just been so pivotal to helping me develop my intuition, which has been so powerful in so many areas of my life. So I'm so grateful for you and for all the women watching. Just know that Dr. <laughs> Meg is amazing. <laughs> Yay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Meg. Thank you so much for watching Intuitive Turning Points. I want you to go ahead and like the video and please subscribe to my channel and then ring the bell to get notifications of future episodes so that you can get the latest in Intuitive Turning Points, stories of successful entrepreneurs. I'm Dr. Meg Hayworth. Get your dose of inspiration right here on Intuitive Turning Points. Thank you so much for watching. I'm so grateful for you.